Welcome to the Black Swans Podcast, the show that spotlights women in finance. Join Shayna Sissel and me, Suzanne Abrams, for enlightening interviews with guests that shed light on what's trending in markets and the world today. Welcome, everyone, to the Black Swans Podcast. We are so excited. We are live from Vegas, and we have Jack Campbell here today with us. Hey, we are hey, so hey. excited. Hey. Um, and I admit I am just getting to know you, and I'm so excited for this, um, shall we say, interview. Um, Shayna hooked us up with this spot, and I'm so excited because you are a peer. I'm also a financial advisor, financial Woo-woo. planner. I want to know how you got into the business. I want to know how things are going. I want to know how it's going with Carson and just get into it. So welcome. Thank and I want to just interject here real quick before I let Jack get going. Um, I met Jack at a conference in January and I immediately was like, I need to know her because she was on stage and talking about women and the business. And she was supposed to be on with two other people, but the other two people didn't show. This is just the Jack show. And oh, really, oh. that's all it needed to be. Because <laughs> I swear, if she had had to share the spotlight with anyone else, it would have taken away from how compelling Destiny. what you had to say was. Amazing. And after that, you know, I like immediately came up to you after that. I'm like, I need to know you. Yeah. And knowing you were a Carson partner and we both knew Jamie Hopkins, we were like, absolutely. And I have been a massive fan ever since awesome and so now i'm over here like for those of you that are on audio only i'm like cheesing from ear to ear right now (laughs) i am just so so on i'm just 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 thank you thank you thank you thank you women yes pour into other women Thank you. That just means the world to me. I'm like almost tearing up, but I know we got we got a show to do. So um, <laughs> thank you for that. I will tell you that when we first met, one of the first things I said was, first of all, oh, she is drop dead gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's just keep it real. It's all good. But no, but more than that, you are smart. You are intelligent. You are doing some incredible things in the industry. This girl knows alternative investments better than I am. <laughs> better than the gurus right and so that's what really really impressed me about you and I knew that even when we connected it was something that for us we're both moms yeah we're boy moms all three of us come on boy moms all right so there's a special place in my heart for boy moms and then there were just some other personal things that we shared just in that moment Mm -hmm. that you know we had just met like five seconds ago and it was just boom 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 real sisters yes so that's what I knew I I was like yep this girl ain't going nowhere so here we are what nine months later look at that bird look at the bird for the baby like (laughs) nine months later we're That's sitting right. here in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. Thank you, Carson Group, for bringing us together. Absolutely. It's a beautiful setting. And I'm I have so been excited. trying to get Jack on the podcast forever and uh, just haven't been able. So now not only do we get her, but we get her in person. This Woo! is beautiful. We're All right. It. So so let's get started. Let's yeah. talk about, well, I'm just dying to know your history in the business. So get us started on how you came into the business yes so I I tell the story I started as a high school co-op student I was literally I was 16 years old and we had this option when we were getting ready to prepare for our senior year where we could actually okay I'm like wait a minute you can go to you could take the whole second half of the day off so you only had to go to like three hours of school and then like the rest of the day you could go to, to a job get paid get credit I said, sign me up. (laughs) I didn't even know what I was signing up for, but it just made sense because I like making money. Um, They told me I could still get my credit so I could graduate. And then they told me I could leave school early. Come on out. And I mean, not that we don't like school. I love school, but I like making money better. Exactly. (laughs) At 16, you know, you want all the gadgets and all the, well, you know, we're girls. So we wanted all the, you know, the cute clothes and the hairstyles and the nails had to get done every week religiously. And my mother would say, excuse me. So because (laughs) I had this little expensive habit in high school, this whole idea of making money just really attracted me. So I start off by saying thank God for the high school co-op program that really opened up the door for me to be sitting here today yeah. because the job I ended up getting was at a bank and it was a receptionist at a private bank and trust company 
Nice. Very well known, recognized, uh oh, well known and recognized mm -hmm. private bank and trust company. So my job, simply put, was to greet people when they came in, make sure they had their water, their coffee, their tea, and file papers. So, yeah, back then we used to file stuff. I know, right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, like they before, would drop like boxes. you scan everything into Dropbox. Yes. Right, no drop boxes back then, y'all. They came in with like big, big boxes, like the banker boxes of the all the big their files. Yes. You had to put them aside in case the SEC came and audited okay, you. Okay, all of that. Seven years on site yep. or whatever the rules were, right? So, so the client walks in one day, and I remember. I looked at the docs because they were like, Jack, you need to go file the docs away. And it was some trust docs. And I noticed the address and it was my grandmother's address. I'm like, that's my grandmother's address, but it was not her name. Her name was not on the doc. It was some other family. So I immediately go to my trust officer. Now, mind you, I'm 16. Because okay? mm -hmm. remember, this is my yeah. senior year of high school. And I... Um, I'm, 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 I'm still trying to understand. But I knew that was her address. Now, she had, she had passed away mm -hmm. about a year and a half prior. So they immediately said, well, that's because that house no longer belongs to her. Someone else purchased it, and it's now in their trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that trust was not my family trust. So I just, it was like that aha moment at 16 where I'm like, wait a minute. Grandmama's house is no longer in our family. It's in someone else's family. Wow. <laughs> That's supposed to be our inheritance, you know. Right. And I, I knew enough about inheritance to know that, man. And, it, and again, it's not mm -hmm. to put my parents on front because they're amazing, right? But right. we didn't know. We didn't have the education about wealth transfer and generational wealth. It was, okay, grandmama dies, you sell the house, you take the proceeds, pay off any debt, and if there's $5 left, you split it between the 12 kids and you keep it moving. That's what we knew. Mm -hmm. But now, here I am at 16, and by fate, I'm sitting in a private bank working as a receptionist, and I'm looking at documents with my grandmother's address. So that was that moment. And yeah. I said, there's, there's something here, right? Yeah. So I like to always like set that tone because that moment, I, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. And I knew it, it, it caused me to be more curious about this whole concept of having a trust Absolutely. because they were in the office to establish their trust to take ownership of my grandmother's house. Did people yeah. at the bank respond to your questions you you were curious so were you asking questions and were they giving you good answers is, is that where your education started A absolutely so the beautiful thing about again the high school and I, and I bring this up again because so many more people need to take this whole concept of like investing in like the high school mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. like more seriously because I know what it did to change my little 16 year old brain and so my mentor at the time, who happened to be my employer, sat me down and explained to me at 16 what a trust was, what a will was, what a power of attorney was, why that's important. And it explained it to me in, I like to say, the layman's terms, right? Mm -hmm. Like I was, I, I'm like, I need to know this so I can go back and explain it to people that don't know this. Right. Because I'm seeing so many people set up GoFundMes to pay for you know, burial costs, where if they just know how to establish things like trust or have life insurance, mm -hmm. let's start there, yeah. then can, I, can my little 16-year-old voice start that conversation? You know, yeah. so that's where it started, yeah. That's and it's it interesting because there's studies. I'm, um, I'm a huge fan of Rock the Street Wall Street, yeah. which is uh, an organization that seeks to educate young women in high school uh, about financial topics, financial literacy, and hopefully encourage them to enter the field. And one of the studies that they did showed that in most families, if you educate the child, the child in many ways then educates the parent. That's right. And John Rogers uh, has the Ariel Community School in Hyde Park in the south side of Chicago. And they introduce financial literacy concepts at kindergarten. And the outcomes for the students are so good because they learn how to invest, but then their parents learn That's and right. get involved. And it really does, the, if you look at the outcomes of the kids that have gone to his school, because it is selective, they, they 
they pull students from the poorest, most violent neighborhoods on the south side to bring them to the school and give them, and I, I know several people that graduated, they all ended up in the business, their parents benefited because they started to think about how to set up their financial situation. That's right. And that, in many ways, is how you sort of break that cycle. That's right. That's yeah. right. Through education. That's right. Education is key. And, and one of the things that people always ask me, what is a best practice that, you know, you you just really just embark even in business today? Like one of the things that we do is we educate our clients to that basic level. Because I go back to my 16-year-old self and how I was educated on those topics. Everything that you, we know John Rogers is doing on the South Side, mm -hmm. that's, that's going to do, think about it, taking someone from – a crime-ridden neighborhood and teaching them this business and then them being able to go back, that's what I did. Once I learned it, I then moved to Chicago from Detroit, my hometown. I ended up moving to Chicago and I ended up starting a program at one of the largest black churches in Chicago and then it got picked up by Reverend Jesse Jackson at Rainbow Push Coalition. And so now here we are teaching financial literacy in the black churches, which is really where we, in some neighborhoods where we're going to be able to really break these kind of cycles of crime and poverty, people just want to know that they can, one, survive. We, t we, mm -hmm. we heard that yep. today, right? right? Yeah. Carson talked about Maslow's hierarchy, yeah. right? If once we start to really solve for those basic needs, then, and that's where our business is so, so, it's not just important, it's almost like necessary, like healthcare. It's yeah. like wealth care. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And it starts if we can get to our children, if we can get to those high schoolers when they're the kind of, I hate to say when they're their most vulnerable, but if we can shift their mindset to think about things properly, there's so much we can do. So that's how I started. I know that's a loaded way of No, but that, it's but folks <laughs> like beautiful. you who are doing that, and then you have like, Tyrone Ross with what he's doing with yes. 401 Financial and you have the folks with Zenith Partners in yes. Philadelphia. One of the biggest trends I'm seeing that it's so positive in this industry is seeing folks realize exactly what you're talking about. Educating at that base level can really be the key to helping break that cycle. That's and, yeah. and that's sort of like... as. I've, I've heard your story, so I want you to keep telling it, how you kind of have come to where you are today, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. you know, from there, building from that, you know, how do you kind of end up? Well, and so, you know, we, we went from high school to then at some point, it was just like, this makes total sense. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose this as a career path, where it was, again, just started as a thing I did just to get out of school right. <laughs> and make some money to... It was actually my purpose. It was my calling. And so ultimately, I, you know, decided that, you know, literally, I think as soon as I turned 21, I sat for my Series 7, mm -hmm. um, took it twice. <laughs> you know, that first time, I think I thought I was a real smart not. The 7, the seven oh when God. you've never done anything in the business before is literally like learning a different I language. I totally get it. Ooh. Yeah, to do that at 21, that is bold. It was bold, but I didn't know any better. I was like, <laughs> someone just said, if you want the job, you yeah. got to pass this test. Here's the books. And I said, and I looked at the books. And they, I mean, they were intimidating, but not really. Until you, like, actually start getting into yep. the material. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is some heavy stuff, right? You know, the seven. And, and But I knew that getting into that when I when I really started, and I got into the material. When you I tell you motivated. I got into it, I got into it. I mean, I was 21 coming into the office on Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., 12 hours a day, every, every Saturday, because I had to still work. So mm -hmm. I was like yeah. working, and then I was studying for my seven at night, and then literally on the weekends, because I had to pass that test. Mm -hmm. And finally, when I passed it the second time, I took it. It was that moment where I said, I made it. That Series 7 just like, it, it did something for me. I said, not just I made it you because I passed the exam, but the information I learned, I had never heard of underwriting municipal bonds. That, you know, just all the stuff that you learn. You're like, ah, this is how markets are created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just opened up the door. So that turned into me becoming literally my very first job 
it, now that I had my Series 7, was working with institutional clients and ultra high net worth clients at 21. They just threw me right out there, y'all. <laughs> wow. And you killed it, obviously. But as an assistant, I wasn't like all the way giving sure. advice, but I was in the I was I was in the shadow. I was in the shadow. That's amazing. I was being prepared. Well, it's amazing that you had the drive to to do that, but also that you had the opportunity. Yeah. That they That's gave key. you the opportunity, this mentor, yes. whoever that was, that actually took the time to teach you, which I think of myself as that kind of teacher. That's right. I'm always trying to give and give That's so right. that I can share information. I'm a teacher, too. That's right. As a financial planner, we're educators. Yes. We're, I see myself as a a servant, That's really. Right. I, I'm here to serve. That's right. So I take care of people right. by by teaching that's right and sharing and and guiding so anyway you guys have so much more purpose than me i just help you do it <laughs> yeah like, i'm on the sidelines helping you do well, it that's why we do what we do exactly. right yes. so you guys are the ones making the real but difference that's so inspiring because when we're doing the work that we're doing you never know what impact that will have on someone's life because look at the impact that that had what was your mentor's name? Oh, yes. Hello, Mr. Mike. <laughs> Michael Wilk, if you're out there, I want you to know I just thank you for believing in me. And again, I mean, Michael Wilk was a gentleman who was probably, you know, I don't know, you know, maybe mid, at that time, I told you I was 21, so he probably was mid 50s, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, you know, and, 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 I was just a little, you know, young 16 girl. 16-year-old. I mean, at the p time, 16. Yeah. And then I fast forward to 21 and, you know, from Detroit, Michigan, and never been exposed to this kind of world. Never understood. You know, yeah, you saw the m evening news, and they would say, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And, I, you know, stock market closed. And, and, you know, you just, that didn't apply yeah. to me. That was for other people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for me until I actually got into that room. And he said, this is for you. I think starting yeah. in a bank is a yeah. great place it to is. begin. It is. I, had, I have a little sister through Big Brothers Big Sisters, and she, she's grown now, but um, she started, she did a lot of different jobs. You know, she always had to work. Yeah. And um, she worked for um, a bank, we all know it. Um, and she learned so much, and she told me, I mean, First of all, counting that money. What a rush, yes. right? To have all that money. And yeah. That's kind yes. of. Yes, I was a teller. Was a they teller. taught you how to. And you, you didn't. You counted the faces. <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you, you have to really know money. Yes. Money is power. Yes, and if you is. understand the intricate details mm -hmm. of how it works, that is so powerful. Absolutely. Yeah, understanding just the stock market. And I actually think, more importantly, just how the economy functions is so critical to being successful as an adult. Because it's applicable to every business and every job. That's right. If you understand just how economics work and how the economy works, what a bond is, what a stock is, you don't have to be super, you know, expert at it. Right. But having that knowledge and that understanding can really make a difference. That's right. And I commend you because, you know, you're highlighting, you're like, mm -hmm. I was just an assistant. Well, obviously... You were intellectually curious mm -hmm. and motivated enough to turn that assistant into Jack Campbell, force of nature, <laughs> runs her own shop and mm -hmm. like ruling the world oh. and more importantly, making a massive difference. Like anybody who saw the video saw Suzanne and I kind of look at each other for a second while you were talking mm -hmm. going, oh, my God, she's amazing. Yeah, because you are. Um, and. We need more women like you. Oh, my God. Well, to I, I, here's the thing. To your point, I just think about, like, so thank you. And, I, and, I, and, 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 and that's why I had to, I, so I, I, I share the story. About three years ago, 2019, I, I, it still blows my mind. It's been almost three years to the date that I decided to leave my uh, big corporate job, if you will, and um, take the leap of faith, if you will, to start, a firm but believe it or not that didn't happen right away I left in 19 and before I decided you know I knew I was gonna do something but I knew I needed rest mm -hmm. I was tired 
So I give you my journey up until 21, but I didn't yeah. tell you the part between 21 and now 46, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I didn't tell you that part, I almost know. 40, you know? And it's like, there was that whole 25 year stretch, right? Yeah. That got me here. And, you know, we got to the place of the, you know, that, but there was building teams, right? You know, m you know, managing almost $1.9 billion, you know, at one of the largest firms, you know, building teams from scratch, you know, really going out and helping people from New York to Chicago to Detroit make sure that they get their Series 7 so mm -hmm. that they can get access to these incredible career that could change their lives and the lives of their community and our clients. That was that was work for me. And when I say work, I don't, I don't mean that in the bad sense. I mean, that was my work. Mm -hmm. That was my purpose. Um, it was to open up doors for people and to make sure that they could see this industry as, as something that could not just, it's not just about the paycheck. It's about everything that we heard today, the right? It was the, it's the impact, it's the freedom. Yeah. It is the true freedom that if you do this right, it, 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 it's, it's, it's powerful. And that's what really motivated me between that gap and when I decided it was time to take the leap of faith and start my own. But I took a year off, you guys, and I went and sat by a lake for a year. I'm not going to lie. I was tired. Your girl, <laughs> I jealous. was tired. I said, before I go jump into this, you know, to this new venture, I need to just go and rest and really hear from my spirit, hear from God, just really understand where this next journey was going to lead me. And so I, I sat by a lake for a year, literally, and I would wake up and I would meditate morning, noon, and night, look at butterflies, doves. I mean, I lived that life. I was like, oh, no Zooms. I scheduled no Zooms. I said, yeah. I mean, I was literally, I quit. I, 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 and I quit. When I say I quit, I quit everything. Life happened, right? I quit any boards I was on. I quit. I quit. I quit. Wow. I quit. I walked away from everything because I was tired. And I knew that I put so much energy into this industry as a woman and a woman of color. And I just knew I just needed some time to, to get quiet. Wow. And it was during that quiet that I got the courage to start Alexander Legacy. And it was because of my courage, I believe, Ron Carson and Terry and Jamie and Aaron and so many incredible people at Carson Group, they they say, let's do this, right? So I think it's really about just your journey, right? It's, it's really just being true to yourself. But it started with that little 16-year-old, right? right. <laughs> you know, yeah. that got curious, but also wanted to make a real significant difference in this industry. And I don't think small. I'm a big thinker, too. So, so what, what kind of difference? You just want to have a little shop in Detroit? No, that's just that happens to be where I'm at. But that's not where we are. We're, our impact, that's not where you're headed. Our impact is going to yeah. be nationwide, if not yeah. global. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. It's not just about, it's not about being famous, because I don't care about that. I, 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 this is hard work. I'd rather, I could pack everything up and just go sit back by that lake and watch butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> right? That was real yeah. easy. This is my assignment. This is mission. This is bigger than me. So when I'm, when I'm out here, I'm like, I'm out here, but let's do this. Because it's bigger than us. We need more women in this industry. We, mean, we, mean, we need more young people. Ron talked about it today, right? More people over 80 than under 30. Who is helping our young people? We are, right? FinServe, we have 70 students here from all over the country to understand the beauty of this profession. I sit on the board of FinServe, and so this is what I, I'm telling you, this is, this is the work mm -hmm. that is going to make a difference. That's going to be our legacy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I get on the soapbox. But oh, no, no, no. Keep <laughs> on going because it aligns so much with like yeah. what we yeah. like when we started the Black Swans podcast. The goal here was um, to educate and inspire, yeah. but more importantly, highlight women in this business who are badass like you <laughs> and like have you. impact. <laughs> like we want to have impact. Yeah. Um, and we want to make a difference. And I'll give you an anecdotal story. I don't want to make this about me. But I have a, my best friend going all the way back to elementary school as um, a, a woman named Lauren. I, I've known her since I was three. 
And I haven't really kept in touch with her as through adulthood. You know, uh, Facebook is great for that. And her daughter and my son are about the same age. And every time I go back home, we always say, oh, we should meet up. And life gets in the way. You know how that happens. But she started listening to the Black Swans podcast. Now, she's a science teacher. She has a... Um, uh, or she had a company that taught STEM to inner city school students in my hometown of Worcester, Mass. She actually sent me a message and said, your podcast changed my life. Yeah. Because she listened to every episode and she felt like she was learning something in every episode and that she could relate to the speakers and she was inspired by it. And so our little impact yes. is is little, but again, it's about having impact. And I just can't stress this enough. Jack is a hurricane. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt. There are like a few people I've met in my life that I'm like, this person is changing the world and I need to know them. And Jack, you're one of those people. And you didn't tell the story here, but mm -hmm. at the conference, you kind of talked about that period mm -hmm. in between when you left and starting um, Alexander Legacy. Mm -hmm. And how difficult that was. And that's how we related on a yes. personal note yes. is just that that struggle. Yes. And now as you're talking, I, I still relate to it because I, I'm a, the most reluctant entrepreneur, founder ever. Like yes. still only like 90% in. Still very uncomfortable and unsure of myself and my ability to succeed. But watching someone like yourself... And hearing you talk, it's just so amazing. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing at Alexander Legacy and sort of how your 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 plan for world domination. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. She had to say, she said, let me just throw that on in there. <laughs> All right. No, so Alexander Legacy. So here we are now, like yeah. present day, right? So we had a nice, um, nice history lesson, but now here we are. And so... Our big focus, and the, the, I like to say we kind of break it down into three pillars. Mm -hmm. And our three pillars, I like to say our KPI, our key performance indicator, is our LPI, which stands for legacy, philanthropy, and impact. And so when I break each of those pillars down, and this is how I talk to my clients, mm -hmm. right? So when they when they come to a session with me, they get they get they get the whole everything, they get this whole vibe, right? They're, they're like, yeah. we didn't know this, but okay. And then they're like, next time we're gonna bring them the So I deal with a lot of families mm -hmm. yeah. because it's like once I get that one and I say, Okay, bring the husband back or bring the wife back, and then bring the kids. The kids. Come, bring the kids, bring auntie. Yeah. Not bring enough auntie. people do that. Exactly. I'm all about the family. I have actually spoken at family reunions. One recently um this past summer in chicago has been doing theirs for 53 years and they brought me in as a keynote um mm -hmm. to their family reunion which has hundreds of people at the same time how cool is that to just speak to hundreds of family members at the same so those are things that get me excited because i'm like this is a dream come true to be able to speak to the whole family Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm normally fighting just to get the wife to bring the husband in with the kids, you know. Yeah. And so that's the point I like to say when I speak to people is that this is a family affair. I said, do you know if you really want to do this successfully, it's about bringing the family together. But, you know, I had to be tested, right, in my own family, right? We, mm -hmm. You know, some you, you feel like, you, you know, when I say be tested, sometimes you get tested by seeing your family be tore apart. We, are, you, we all are in the Suzanne too, so we got it. You get tested on that, but you, but the triumph of that is how can you still make sure that you build mm -hmm. because it's bigger than you. It's about the legacy. It's the mm -hmm. children and then the children's children that may or may not be here yet, right? And so, I mean, Alexander Legacy, when I speak to my clients, I'm like, so what's your legacy plan? So when I go through, I'm like, what is it that we are really going to do with your name? And if you tell me I don't care about my life, then we're not a good match immediately. Because the, pe the people that are going to be attracted to Alexander Legacy, first and foremost, have made a commitment and a vow and a covenant that they are going to ensure that their children's children don't have to start from zero. So they are already thinking about, I know I'm not going to be here forever, but I know I want my legacy to be. Because I'm going to have great, 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 great. I'm, I'm the descendant of someone. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, why can't it be that Jack Campbell and G1, if I got to be G1 in this case, we got to start somewhere. But maybe my grandkids can be G3 
and G4. And we can really start the movement of creating multi-generational wealth. So we can pretty much kill those 17 sustainable states. You know, I mean, we yeah. know what, what it takes. We talked about Maslow today. So legacy. So we solve for things. You know, are, do, are you properly insured? Where's your trust? Do you know, we, we look under, mm -hmm. that un, under that hood and really pick it apart to make sure that we're solving for anything that may, that may have missed or just simply did not know. You mm -hmm. don't know what you don't know. Then we flip it to philanthropy. Now, if you're making money, you better be giving some of that away. I'm, I'm big into philanthropy, <laughs> right? So I have, I have a saying in my house, give, save, spin to win, win, win. Because if you do the first two, they will always take care of you. Mm -hmm. And so I ask my clients, what is your giving plan? What are we doing to make the world a better place? What do you, where, what's most important to you? And we un, once we understand that, we, we identify whether it's donor advised funds, whether it's a foundation, we determine what's the next best course of action to fulfill that philanthropic purpose for them and their family. And we can start to really build out that family mission statement, mm -hmm. right? So that's the philanthropy. And then lastly, impact baby and that's where my girl comes in right because that's where we can really start to understand now the, the investment style i'm an impact you know my, my mm -hmm. philosophy is very much impact if you can yeah. tell right yeah, yes. um you know personally for my own personal portfolio i look at opportunity zones um i'm big into really going you know i like to go places that don't nobody like to go like oh everyone's going left let me go explore right <laughs> you know and see if there's something some some diamonds in the rough that might make sense long term for clients right so alternatives but social impact opportunity zones those are areas that are very much in alignment with our mission uh, for our clients so so again so so clients that work with us you know our real focus is really aligning those kind of that LPI sort of umbrella around their entire um, um, financial plan how do you um, how do you pull clients into your into your web of Have you met her? She <laughs> would need a lot of help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like just uh, <laughs> magnetism, and I mean because I find it's um, as as a planner, um, philanthropy isn't something on everyone's mind, and so I think that I could learn a lot from you actually because. Um, I think the way that I talk about philanthropy is not as powerful as what you're doing. You really are, you know, motivating and sort of, you know, teaching people the importance of it. And oh, yeah, and, it, and we align their investments that way, right? Well, and that's, so it's, that's, that's really what it is. That, mm -hmm. That's it, actually what I do is because I help with that yeah. core allocation. Then we spend time, once we have that, finding the private types of alternative stuff that perfectly align with what there is important to them, what they're passionate about. Exactly, so exactly. And many of them, again, if we're talking about folks in a, in a particular tax bracket as well, and we're looking mm -hmm. for, again, ways that we can do good, save money on taxes, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's another great tool. So I've worked with Fidelity Charitable. I've got some wonderful friends there that, you know, really help make sure that we have the right strategy from a donor advisor fund mm -hmm. purpose so now it's like hey guess what you get to do every December once you fund your DAF if you you know when you're ready we can send grants mm -hmm. to some of your favorite charities for you know for the holidays whatever it might be Christmas Hanukkah whatever right yeah. but point of the story is is that we make philanthropy a key part of their portfolio because what we believe is that if you're not like let's start with our friend Ron Carson here we know he's a giver Mm -hmm. We know he's a major philanthropist. We know he absolutely loves charity, and he does so much to help so many people. So when I break that down to my clients like that, and I give a key example of him, mm -hmm. and he's that guy, and he's also very successful, you know, it's a very easy way to be able to say, now <laughs> you can do this you too. can do this too you can yeah. now you may not have the you know 85 million dollars to give away a year that some of our other but you know what do you have 85 dollars well right. i think so many people count themselves yeah. out That's and right. it's the same thing that you're doing with engaging people through education is empowering them to feel like they have control over right. their destiny right and their financial destiny That's rather right. than feeling you know i think that underserved communities there's um a sense of hopelessness and so therefore you 
make choices that are not good choices because there isn't a sense of hope. If you can give hope that says, you know, I am capable of doing amazing things. That's right. And, you know, Jack is going to help me to do that That's right. or whoever it is we, we all need a mentor we all need a coach we all need somebody you know we were talking about this in another episode that we need community That's right. to support us to do big things that's right and you know you know to your point about like community and support and hopelessness think about it like this i have to share this i'll, I'll share this real quick this is you want to take somebody who like i'm again i'm from detroit detroit you know, now it's changing, very much changing, um, has changed, not even mm-hmm. changing, has changed, let me mm-hmm. be clear, but at one point was a city filled with poverty, okay? Um, fast forward, they're, they're redoing some different areas of the city, and now the same friends that would be in these areas, that would be shopping in these, these, these malls or these areas, now they get to own part mm-hmm. of this like how cool is it to say I used to shop at that mall that they shut down and that was boarded up now I'm actually own a piece of that land mm-hmm. right and so that's what's getting people excited right now and that's what we want to do with our clients that's the impact piece and so you mm-hmm. ask to round it out what are we doing to make an impact you, we're showing clients how their dollars are going to support the things that are close to them so that they it's almost like nostalgia. Like they're like, I remember running around that mall at 18. Yeah, but now guess what? You get to own a piece of the mall and right? make it a better place and make your community better. And you make your community better. And it's cleaning up crime. And it's um, it's it's just that's the that's the real work. Well, not it's only not that, the, you know, 12 percent or 22 percent. Right. Well, no. <laughs> not only that, but like the hopelessness that you were speaking of. When you give people hope. It changes everything, everything, everything. And and that's really what it's all about. So when you can kind of pass it along, that's why I always like to get the kids involved in the situation early on. Like you meet with the parents, figure out and then it's like, no, bring your kids in. Let's have a conversation. Let's buy them open an acorns account and buy them some fractional shares of whatever their favorite thing is. My son, it would be Roblox, even though it's an awful stock. Yeah. It would still. <laughs> it, it, the point is yeah. to get them involved and to educate them early on, because again, that gives them hope and knowledge. And again, dip their toes in. That's, that's how right. you make yep. the difference. That's right. I yep. love this. This is this is so good. And 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 again, thank you for just reinforcing. Again, it goes back to if I were to like wrap up any of what I hope comes out of this conversation for your listeners is if we can get to our youth Mm -hmm. because that's you asked me how how did it full circle I was 16 now it doesn't mean that you can be a you know if you're 58 it doesn't (laughs) know you can still get in this profession too I'm I'm loving some career changers now that are going from like nursing and teaching to come into our profession even in their mid 50s and 60s love it but my heart is really for our youth Mm -hmm. because if we can get to our youth especially on south side of chicago and detroit michigan and areas that we know that if that that's how we change the world that is how we change that's how we change the world and guess what we're gonna make a whole lot of money doing it too (laughs) it's okay that's okay and everybody benefits and everyone benefits because guess what when we do it everyone benefits and Mm -hmm. i just like to say that that part it's okay Exactly. It's Absolutely. okay. It's a great profession to be in and you get to make a big difference too. You make a huge difference and it's financially lucrative. And That's this right. is why we should be encouraging women, That's what minorities to be in this business. They don't see people they can relate to. Exactly. And when uh, Melody Hobson always used to say, if you see it, you can be it. That's right. And it's so cliche, but it is so true. It's so true. And once you find somebody you can personally identify with, which is why it's She so was the first person I saw. It's the melody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's the thing. Mm -hmm. What you need is people you can relate to. And that's why it's so important as women, as uh, uh, people of color to be authentically who they are. That's right. Because that inspires being like cookie cutter does not inspire somebody and doesn't make it accessible to somebody. Mm -mm. Telling our stories is how we make the difference. That's right. Someone said to me recently who had had met me recently that they were surprised that I have the career that I have. Like mm. they, I, it didn't strike them as like, 
what they expected of me. And that says so much that mm. we sort of have an expectation of what somebody looks like who's I- managing investments. But we're changing and that. doing financial planning. That's why we're doing this because um, we need to have a whole rainbow of people in this industry so that we don't just consider one look to be who who can be in the bank that's right. Right. Count, counting the money and doing so much more that's right so i'm so happy to have this conversation with you it's yeah. been such a pleasure i yeah. swear we could go for like hours and hours yes. Broderick, yes. Our, li- our producer here is like cut, cut. i know i love it but I we're in it. vegas so we're gonna you know cut this and go have some fun so yeah. thank you so thank much thank you for joining us thank you i'm so glad that you all had me on the show ladies let's just Finally. continue to just make it happen change the world there you go all Absolutely. right i'm Thanks, with you Jack.